Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. On again, just a beautiful morning that God has given us for worship and prayer and singing and being together, hearing God's word to us in scripture and song and in our conversation and sharing together. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor at Douglas Avenue. And on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so glad that you are here, particularly today. This is our back to school worship celebration today. We're gonna to have a special time of prayer, back to school prayer and blessing for students, teachers, and staff. So I hope that you'll uh, stay with us and, and be a part of all of those wonderful celebrations with pictures and prayers today. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the first time today with Douglas Avenue. We are so glad that you have picked us, that you're worshiping with us today. We'd love for you to fill out our contact form. I'd love for everyone who's here to fill out that contact form. It's pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you to be able to give us some information so that we can connect with you during the week for all kinds of ways that we're in ministry together and in service to our community. There's also on that contact form a place for you to put your prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team. That's a wonderful way that we can be connected together in prayer. So please use that. Of course, when we're together for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that covenant to participation means that we're going to fully be a part of what we're doing here today. When we pray, uh, we invite everybody to pray. We stand up and sing when it's time to do that. Come in close to see everything. Maybe turn off other devices and distractions. Light a candle to help you focus and really fully participate. And then we covenant to be a blessing together so that everything we say, all of our comments, in the comment section, the way that we are present with one another in our households and with one another online, that all of that is a blessing to everyone and to our world. And then also remember that when we come together, we're not just kind of random people watching a video online. We are the body of Jesus Christ gathered for worship. And as such, I invite you to greet one another, sharing the love and peace of Jesus Christ. You can say, peace be with you and also with you, with the people that you're gathered with, with the people in the comment section, with folks who are online. Join me in that right now. Let's say, peace be with you and also with you. Let's go ahead and do it. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. My name is Justine Dion. I'm the leader of the Young Adult Sunday School class and a member of Esther Circle. I'm also a teacher at Athens High School and I teach math. My name is Curtis Dion. I am chair of the finance committee at DAUMC, and I am the business teacher at Athens High School. These are our kids. This is Meredith, she's two. This is Aaron and he's four. He will be attending pre-K this year. Please join with us in the call to worship. Your line is, thank you, God. Let's practice by saying that together. Thank, thank you, God. God. We gather together in worship and praise. Thank, thank you, God. God. We praise you, God, for the sun in the sky. Thank you, God. We praise you, God, for the moon and stars at night. Thank you, God. We praise you, God, for calling us to be light in the world. Thank you, God. We praise you, God, for always lighting our way. Thank you, God. Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm a longtime member of the Chancel Choir here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I invite you to sing along with us today, and our first hymn is going to be Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let us 
us all in thee inherit. Let us find that second rest. Take away our bed to sinning, Alpha and Omega be. In the faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation, perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. It is time for small talk. So I want to invite all of the children who are worshiping to get in close to your screen so that you can see everything that's going on. Small talk is led by Ms. Laurie, who's our director of children and youth ministries, and of course, Laud the Lamb and his assistant. And then we're going to have our scripture readings that are led by some of our students and our assignment DAUMC, which features photos by uh, of students uh, going back to school and teachers and staff with special music that's provided to us by Karis Brown and Marcia Stout. So let's come in close to enjoy all of this, our small talk and everything. Good morning, everybody. I am Miss Lori, and this is this is Laud. Laud, come on, come on. All right, don't break things. Okay, so it's back to school weekend. Laud is a little unhappy about his back to school plan. He was not really wanting to learn remotely this year, but that's what he's doing. Hey, now listen, you be a good sheep, okay? Now, Laud's gonna start with online learning which is new and it's different, but it's still back to school. Yeah, it is still back to school time. And we can still back bless the backpacks, which yesterday we did our drive-through backpack blessing, which was really fun. And he was in a better mood yesterday, but this morning, not so much. And some of you might be feeling that way too somewhere in between excited and nervous and not knowing how to feel right now. But it's still back to school and all of those wonderful things that come with it. And starting a new school year, we really wanted you to make sure that you knew one really, really important thing. And it's up here on his bulletin board, his whiteboard, sorry. So I'm gonna get that down because it's kind of hard to see. But if you did the backpack blessing, you got one of these yesterday and it's right here and it says, you are loved. We want you to tr remember that you are loved this whole school year and that God loves you. He is your light and your way. Yeah, right. Here, you want this? Can you hold this? Hold it for me, please. Thank you. So Laud's feeling a little bit better now about school, right? Yeah. And it's going to be okay. Just remember, you are very loved. We miss you. We want wonderful things for you this year. Right, Laud? Yes, right. Right. He's a happy, happy sheep right now. Sort of. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Maria LaFriend. I go to Franklin Middle School and I'm in sixth grade. Hi, I'm Emily LaFriend. I'm a sophomore at Missouri Southern State University. Our first reading is from the Bible is Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through these readings. Jesus taught, 
you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, you let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our second reading from the Bible is Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. The Apostle Paul taught, Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with the haughty, be associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Be loved. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written. Be loved. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen.
past week, my family and I jumped in the car for and took a one day whirlwind back to school road trip to the Cincinnati Zoo, mostly to see Fiona the baby hippo. I am a big fan of Fiona the baby hippo. Uh, and if you want to fill up your social media feed with a bunch of happiness, then I encourage you to join the Cincinnati Zoo online media and uh, the We Love Fiona the Hippo page. It will just make you very happy. But to accomplish this uh, one day whirlwind road trip, we started driving at 6 a.m. with a pretty tight stop schedule. And we were driving, of course, into a beautiful sunrise on a lovely Illinois morning, which soon made it clear that there was absolutely nothing clear about our windshield. Apparently, the lack of driving around these past few months has also led to a lack of inside windshield cleaning. It was all on the inside. So during our very first quickly timed uh, stop because we had time tickets to get into the Cincinnati Zoo mind you uh, and I'm not gonna miss seeing Fiona no anyway we stopped and my husband Curtis uh, jumped out and got some of those uh, quick windshield wipes there at the pilot outside of Decatur I know you know what I'm talking about um, and he brought those out and we frantically started to clean the inside windshield uh, of our car and the windows and all of those things and it helped us just enough uh, to be able to get to Cincinnati uh, safely and on time for our timed entry into the zoo. Now, Fiona was awesome, by the way, and so was the rest of the zoo for that matter. It was a great road trip. In any case, frantically cleaning the inside of the windshield helped me understand in a different way Jesus' teaching on letting your light shine. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus tells us to let our light shine. But what does that mean? What does that look like when maybe we're feeling like our windshields are pretty smudged up for all kinds of reasons and situations? But maybe particularly as we're heading into our online asynchronous and synchronous learning and teaching at home on devices during this new school year. Maybe that's mixed with some brief moments of carefully orchestrated time in classrooms. We get some help from the, uh, the list that Paul, the Apostle Paul has for us, uh, that's in Romans chapter 12. These are attributes that are marks or characteristics of the Christian life. These ways that we love and follow Jesus are ways of being in ourselves, with others, in our world, that clean off our glass so that light, God's love, power, and transformation shines through us. There's a lot in that passage for us, but I'd like for us to focus in on this phrase that Paul writes in verse 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Rejoicing, patience, perseverance. I'm willing to bet that you are going to hear and experience a lot of the opposite from others and also in yourself as we begin this new school year. Rather than rejoicing, we are likely to find ourselves complaining about our experiences, inconveniences, hardships, and loss of what was or what should be as school begins. Rather than being patient, we may find ourselves and others quick to anger and to experience frustration. Rather than exhibiting perseverance, we may find ourselves and others throwing our hands up in the air and giving up, tossing those papers off the table, slamming the computer closed, stomping away and giving up with much crying and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And that's just on Monday morning. So how do we get our spirits, our minds, our hearts into the place that Paul suggests that helps clean off the glass and lets the light shine through. 
for Paul and Jesus, that light shines through when we orient ourselves around the other person, around others, rather than our own rights or privileges and needs and wants or preferences. We have compassion for others and for ourselves. This is the first important step. This is trying to live as Jesus did from that fundamental beginning place of compassion. This probably looks like compassion for your teacher, O oh students and parents, as they are doing their very best to make things work out for you and your classmates, given the impossible expectations that our political leaders and parents have demanded of our schools in this season. The failure of political and administrative imagination is pitting teachers against students and uh, parents instead of providing resources that families in our communities actually need in the midst of a health crisis and global pandemic. Have some compassion for your teachers. This probably looks like compassion for your students and families, oh teachers and staff given the multiple stresses that they are experiencing in balancing school and work and friends and home and life. For some students, at-home learning is an invasion of school into their private, safe space. Turns out not all students think of going to school as a good thing and home and their room are often the safe space for them. School is following them into that safe space and there is no relief. And that's tough. For some students, school is the safe space for them, but being there in person is just not safe or healthy either at this time. Their home life may not be conducive to at-home learning or may simply not be safe. And we have young children doing their best with their very few years of living and helpful life experience to guide them. I know you know this, and this is tough all the way around for everyone. And that's even before homework assignments, quizzes, and tests begin. So rejoicing, patience, perseverance? Well, compassion is the start for this. Compassion is when we are able to see the needs of others that reorient such each one of us around the other person and how to help them, not just around the difficulties we may be experiencing at the moment. As we learned in Adventure Explorers this summer, compassion is key to forming strong community, and it turns out it's key to leading us to rejoicing, patience, and perseverance, too. Compassion helps you become more aware of the resources around you, to the blessings and strength that God is offering to you, to the people and communities that are seeking to support you. And that is a path to gratitude. And gratitude turns the corner for us, leading us to rejoicing and to patience. Fortitude for this time and season. Compassion to gratitude, to rejoicing, to patience and fortitude. This is what it looks like to have your light shine out into the world right now. And God believes in you, your church family believes in you, I believe in you that we can do this together and we start with that compassion. Another very important word Paul has for us in letting our light shine out is in verse 21 of Romans chapter 9. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I hadn't originally been intending on exploring this for our message this week, but it's been hard to watch the news and not feel like we're being overwhelmed with evil. Police have shot another black man, this time in Kenosha, Wisconsin. A far-right extremist murdered two protesters in response. It's easy to feel like we are overcome by evil. Paul says, don't be overwhelmed, but overcome evil with good. But how do we do good in the face of this evil? At Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we're continuing down the path to overcome evil with good in some very practical ways. 
One is that we are learning together about the realities, roots, and causes of racism and white supremacy that are so deeply ingrained in our laws, social contracts, communities, churches, families, and in ourselves. There are ongoing and upcoming opportunities for this learning available to you, and I pray that you will take advantage of those. This is thoughtful and discomforting but necessary work. We are getting comfortable with being uncomfortable with racism, and this is a first and necessary step. Those of us who are white, and that is the vast majority of our Douglas Avenue family, we will listen to people of color and believe people of color when they talk about systemic racism and their personal experiences of racism. As we've been learning in the Tuesday morning Bible study, we uh, just because you don't experience racism or see it or have not reflected on it, well, that doesn't mean it's not there or that it's very real and pervasive. We also pledge ourselves to join together in supporting Black-led organizations and movements as they seek societal, legal, and political changes. We get behind them in support and action. We are also working to confront racism and racist systems in ourselves, among our friends and family, in our church, in our workplaces, and the parts of the world where we have influence. In the midst of this, we remember that working on being anti-racist doesn't mean you will be fully automatically non-racist. You will not get this right all the time. You will mess up. We will mess up. That means we all have to listen with humility to people of color. You don't have to be defensive but approach and engage with humility and keep trying. Persevere with full humility and compassion. It turns out that overcoming evil with good is, is not just about happy thoughts and warm wishes and posting soft focus memes of baby hippos. It is also about doing good by making changes in our world to benefit others. It is about doing good with honest self-reflection, humble engagement with others, learning, reflecting, adjusting, and trying again and again. That's not navel-gazing or weakness, as some have disparagingly called it. Instead, it is overcoming evil with good, working to clean off your glass so your light will shine and God's light shines even stronger through you and all of us. Because the truth is, large-scale social change is hard and it takes time. Sometimes we fail at it, but we still engage in it. We still do it. We still muster compassion and rejoice and persevere. Personal change is also hard and also takes time. But we still do it. We must do it. We still muster compassion and rejoice and persevere. And we do all this in full confidence of God's power, Jesus leading, and the Holy Spirit's love and lighting us with power and purpose. Do not let your light be clouded by the evil of this world. Overcome evil with good. You got this. Shine on. Amen. As we enter into prayer together, let's join singing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
the beginning of this school year is like no other. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, the worry, plans changed and reformed and reformed again, and the excitement and hopefulness of the beginning of this school year, we want to surround students, families, teachers, and staff with prayer and blessing. Please join with us now in prayer. Thank you, God, for this new school year and for new opportunities to learn and grow, whether it be in a virtual classroom, a physical classroom, or from our homes. Bless our teachers, leaders, caregivers, and administrators as they guide us into the new school year. Give them the tools and energy to create engaging ways for all of us to learn and grow. Help each student to open their hearts and minds to new ideas, new friends and leaders, and new ways of learning. When things don't go as planned, give us patience and help us all rejoice in newness. When there are technical difficulties, give us patience and help us rejoice in simple things like books and crayons. When, when we, we feel, feel lonely, lonely or isolated, isolated help us remember, remember that you are by our side. We are never alone. When teachers and caregivers seem worried and worry, help them to be gentle with themselves. When students seem anxious and unfocused, Help them to relax and remember that you are right there with them. As we begin to explore the unknown of this school year, let us rejoice with new friends, in new ways of learning, in knowing that you are with us through it all. God of joy and light, pour out your blessing upon these students and their families, on teachers, school staff, and administrators. Bless their backpacks and briefcases, their computers and devices, virtual classrooms, school buildings, and all preparations that help build a strong and safe year for everyone. May each one be a blessing and light in this new school year. Go and light up the world. Amen. Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I am the Associate Pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, as well as the Director of the Ministry Wouldn't It Be Lovely here at the church. It is now the time in our worship service where we go to God in prayer. Before we do that, I do want to remind you to continue to share your prayer concerns with your church family if that is something that you feel um, important to you because prayer is so important to us as a church. You can do that by completing the contact form on the Facebook Live, and there is a space at the bottom that you can include your prayer request. You can also call the church office with your prayer concerns or email myself or Pastor Reverend Meredith Brown, and we will hold those prayers close and pray for them daily. So I ask you now to take a deep breath as we go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious and most loving God, we come to you today with many emotions but first, O oh God, we come to you with hearts of gratitude. We are so grateful, O oh God, that you are our light, that in this time of uncertainty and as this pandemic continues, we know, O oh God, that you are our light and that you are journeying beside us. And that gives us hope each and every day to continue. We're also grateful, O oh God, for this church and for all the ways this church building is continuing to be used during these times. We're grateful, O oh God, for all those that participate in the ministries, however they do that, through their times, their talent, or their treasures. What a wonderful church that gives light into this whole world. We also, oh God, come to you with heaviness on our hearts. This pandemic is continuing and it does get long and old for some. And for that, God, we ask you to draw near to those that have special needs. We ask you, oh God, to, go, to draw near to those that are ill either with the virus or for whatever reason, for those that are seeking medical attention, for those that are grieving, for those that are addicted, for all of the needs that each of us have or know people that have, we ask you to draw near to them and may they see your light as they continue through their journey. We ask you, oh God, especially today on this Back to School Sunday, that you be with each student as they start their school year, whatever setting they are, we just know that it's different. We ask that you give them courage and strength and you give them the support people that they need to make this all happen. We pray, oh God, for our teachers. Be with them and empower them and strengthen them. We ask 
Also, God, that you be with parents and grandparents, those that are supporting small ones in their homes, that you give them patience and rest and give them the knowledge they need to make this work in this difficult time. Oh God, we just pray that you are with the schools all over the world during this time. We pray, oh God, for so many things. We pray for our world, for those that have been affected by um, Hurricane Laura, those that have been displaced from their homes. We ask you to draw near to them, that they can find your light through the helpers for those that are coming to assist. May, oh God, each of us open our hearts and know how we can help others. Oh God, in this long and troubling time, we continue to ask you to be with us, to journey beside us, that we look for your light in all these different places. We ask you to be with our church and the denomination and all those in leadership as decisions are made how best and how most safely to worship together. But how grateful we are for the opportunity and the technology that we can be together in this way on this Sunday. We come to you now, God, in a time of silence where we just put everything down and we give to you. We lay at your feet the needs that are deepest in our hearts. Be with us now as we pray in silence. And God, you taught us a prayer um, that we often pray when we're struggling or when we are weary. That prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and we will recite it together wherever we are. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we are so grateful for all of the ways that you are blessing with your presence, with your prayers, with your gifts of finances that are going into particularly this back to school time. Your giving makes a huge difference in the way that we are able to be in service in our community and in the world. We encourage you to continue to give your gifts. You can do that online through our webpage. The link is right in the comment section of this worship. You can do that through your financial institution with automatic bill pay. You can do that with setting up an automatic withdrawal with our church and just call the church office for information on how to do that. And of course, you can always mail in checks into our church office. All of that giving makes a huge difference. And we're encouraging everyone right now to participate in a special blessing that we're doing with Du Bois Elementary School, our local elementary school right close to Douglas Avenue. We are seeking to bless Du Bois with gifts of headsets for the children that is such necessary equipment as they're doing that online learning at home. It really helps so much apparently with the focus and the way they're able to participate. We are lined up to provide Du Bois with 250 headsets. We've already delivered almost 150 of those. They cost $14 a piece and you can give especially into that blessing. You can do that. Um, the online giving is pinned right into the comment section. You just go to the special offerings and pick the Du Bois Back to School Blessing. It's right there. I hope that you'll continue to be a part of that blessing as we head into this school year. And now we get to receive a wonderful offering of hope from one of our students, Elizabeth Fry. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I am a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am the jam choir. I'm going into fifth grade at Lindsay Elementary. I got the steps from a friend and she offered to paint it any color I wanted. That gave me hope that the school year was going to be good. And that makes me find hope in love in others. Please join us in singing Life Song. My whole family was involved in this taking of acapella. We hope you enjoy it. May the words I say 
Thank you so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today for this wonderful celebration. It has been an honor to have you here to worship with us. We love you. We want to connect with you. Please, if you haven't done so, go ahead and fill out that contact form so that we can reach out and be connected with you in ministry and love and faith and service. And also remember that you can put your prayer requests there for our pastors and our prayer team. Uh, we pray with you and um, just love the way that we're able to be connected online right now, even while we're staying safe and healthy with the social distancing. Now, as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you, that Jesus Christ goes with you, that the Holy Spirit is calling you forward to clean off that glass and to be a part of love and blessing, of compassion and rejoicing and perseverance in our world today and all days. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.